Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we are actually gonna start a series. I wanna do my Gap Plus. Everybody knows I've been dying to get to it ever since I did the restoration with the uh, Miss Pack series. If you wanna see that, just click on the link up above. Um, don't forget to subscribe, by the way. If you guys are new to the channel, uh, this is a great channel to see for restorations, for fixes. You know, I started out as a beginner. I'm not um, trained in this, I'm not an engineer, but I just, you know, read stuff on the internet, try stuff, and over time I learned how to do stuff and I try to pass it along to you. So that's what this channel is all about. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and start this series. It's gonna be really cool. I'm gonna start by restoring the actual cabinet outside, doing some body work. So that's what this episode is gonna focus on. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so here I am pulling it out of the house. It's actually really light once you remove everything from inside, so you can easily do it yourself. So at first glance, it looks like it's in great shape, but it's in pretty poor condition, as you'll see in a second. But I didn't really feel too bad because Miss Backman's are pretty common, and it's a great conversion, and it's a midway cab, so check it out. You could see, I'm gonna get some Bondo on the edging here. I don't think it needs any wood hardener. It's not really crumbling or anything just along the edge here. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to put some vertical laminate. I decided that's what I want. I'm going to first take off the T-molding and then I'm going to have to figure out how to get in there to get the edges because sometimes on these cabinets, I'm trying to see if they do it, but they staple it <laughs> right into it and you have a, tech, a heck of a time trying to get it out. So I may try to rip this out and see what happens and then maybe have to even get a uh, slot cutter to go around it clean it out so I'm gonna do that and I'm not gonna spend much time on it I'm just gonna put the bondo on and then from there just sand it and then uh, probably spray paint the edges black here because that's the color it's gonna be for the laminate and then um, if I get to it this fall great if I don't with the laminate I'll wait till the spring but at least it'll be done I'm trying to beat the weather here because it's fall it's October and that's what I want to do but um, I didn't want to paint it because you could actually see the grain right here where it's going to be really terrible if I sand it, paint it, and sand it, it's going to take forever. I'd rather just get it nice and smooth, put the laminate over it so it's buttery smooth, and then put the artwork over it for the cabinet. So, yep, so this is it, you know, if you guys missed it, I'm not actually, uh, you know, I wasn't destroying this cabinet. I had planned to restore it anyway uh, with new artwork with the prototype artwork, but then I decided that I wanted to make the other switch that I did. You can see my other video on that where I switched the brand new stuff, you know, the uh, nice looking stenciled artwork. For this one, I took the guts on this one, transferred it to the other one, saved it. And then uh, ironically, I'm painting this one black so that I can put the laminate to make it a gapless. So that's my plan. Okay, and this is all torn up here too. I'm going to have to definitely bondo that, take out the bolts, take out this coin door. So I'll do that right now and remove it. Let's try this one, see if we get lucky. 16 millimeter. And we got lucky. <laughs> it's actually loose. So it's really easy to do. And I should be able to get that out. There we go. So I could put a dowel in there and glue it. Hmm. There's also another piece that's embedded. It's actually on the other side. And this one's already out, so there was none there. Um, I should really take these out too if I'm going to paint it. But in the meantime, um, just come off here with those three screws, or you can just take the whole thing off. I'm gonna take the whole thing off here. There's small little bolts. There's one. Most of them are loose, so I lucked out. Let's see. Yep, that one's loose too. They're actually, the bolts are part of the door. I'll show you when I take it off. And then this one is really stuck in there. So I'm going to have to use pliers to get in there. It's 
been a while since I did one outside. <laughs> I think the last one was my bar top, and the time before that was my Nintendo cab. So, let's get this one up here. Another one. And I think that's it. So they're built in right here. So all you have to do is put this nut. That's all I was doing is putting it on the back. But the people who did it didn't put washers. So this had actually crushed into the wood itself. And it was really hard to get out for some of them. So that's why I was having trouble. Yeah, so this door will be restored. I should do a series on that. I've done them before, but this one's pretty bent up here. Uh, I don't know, I could straighten it out. I could still do it, I could see. But it looks like it's snapped here, it's broken. So they definitely tried to break in this door. I don't know, I do have an, a new one I can use for that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet, but this is it. Wow, you could see some of this stuff here. I might have to glue that, clamp it. Right there, it's like coming out. So instead of pulling it off and bondoing that, it's easier just to put some wood glue in there clamp it like that and then uh, let it dry different size dowels you can see here there's thin ones and it goes up in size and I think this one the thicker one uh, may fit compared to those so I always have these on hand <clears throat> it's a good uh, tool to have to fill these little holes instead of bonding it and putting you could also put if you wanted to like duct tape in the back or something or uh, painters tape and then just fill it in um, you know, obviously facing the other way and then it'll be fine. But I feel you get some dowels like this, like this is perfect actually. I need to smack it in there um, after you cut it. So there you go. So that goes in, it's sticking out the back. And what I typically do is I'll put it through, I'll put it in and then push it in slightly so that um, only a little bit is kind of, instead of being out like that and then cutting it against here, which is really tempting, you actually push it in so it's right there so that when you put the bondo over it kind of fills it in over that and it's a really nice smooth perfect surface that's flawless um, if you have it out here and you cut it smooth and sand it down you'll have to fill like the outside but still that's a different surface it's actually better if you put it like tiny bit in maybe a 16th or a 32nd of an inch inside and then you put it over and it creates a really good bond and it'll never come out so off camera basically I cut it just a little bit about three quarter of an inch you take it out that's gonna be your plug get all these dowels out here oh you know what I have to let me quickly do this I'm not gonna do a close-up on it but I gotta get this over here I have another uh, tube of this inside, but for now, we should be able to survive. So the trick is to bend the bath as much as you can without breaking it. So, get it in there. Let's see, hopefully it comes out. I might get lucky here. It's taking a lot with it, but You know, there's nothing you can do about that, but we definitely have to take this off to get brand new T-molding on. Oh man, we got lucky. Last time I took this off, it was crumbling in my hand from the Galaxian. My friend's Galaxian, and it's pretty gross. <laughs> this one came off nice and easy. Awesome. Staple here. All right, we'll see. You know, I could see actually they were stapled. It's making, yeah. Yeah, I'll show you real quick. So on these midway calves, sometimes they have right in here. You can see, I could tell by the T-molding. Has like a little notch. You see that notch right there? And that notch, um, when you rip it off, 
kind of rips a hole in it, you see that? And that's because there is a staple in here. So what they did was they either went from the inside here and stapled that way, or they stapled this way before they sprayed it. So um, all these cabinets have that. So what you have to do is you take a Dremel with a cutting edge that cuts metal, and then you just run it along inside and it cuts all the staples so that you can put the T-molding back in. All right, so I'm gonna yank these out. Came out a lot. Eh, you just take this off with a brush later. Just gonna watch out for splinters. And then I'll lift it up to get the last of it. Cool. All right, let's flip it back. Um, actually, let's keep it up like this so I can do the bondo. Okay, so I have my auto body here. I'm going to put this down. You know, it doesn't matter if I get any on that, it's fine. Um, actually, I'll just do that. Put this on the side. I usually use this stuff, by the way. This stuff works great. It has like a little bit of, it's like cardboard. If you do it on here, it'll soak it up. You can take a piece of cardboard and mix it. Um, but I feel like this with that film, Pampers work really good or any other boxes that have like a little film on it, like toys and stuff like that. So I save those. <laughs> They're easy to store and work great so let's see all right so this is the hardener and then i do have something to open this up but i don't feel like going to get it so i'm gonna try to open it up this way should work My kids should be home anytime soon. So looks like I gotta stir it up a little bit. Let's see if I can, uh, what can I use? I'm gonna use an old piece of wood that I had that I drilled into. It's been a while. So I'm just mixing the whole batch so it's fresh. And then I'll put that there. You grab some of it. You don't want to put too much because uh, it'll get hard on you. So I'm just going to get enough for those right there. And let me get a little bit more. That should be enough. Now this here won't get hard until... I don't even know what that is. What is that? Oh, it's the label. That's the label of the wood. I'll just put that on the side here. It's kind of sticking through, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna cover it just slightly. That, we'll get rid of that. And what I do is you can buy these little Bondo things. Um, instead of using one whole one, I usually cut them into like thirds and then use them that way. So um, one thing you wanna do, I already got some on there. Like I said, it's not a big deal. It's gonna be covered with laminate. Um, what you wanna do is, to avoid what I'm doing now where it gets all gross, you wanna just mix it up. I mean, mine's been sitting around for a long time, and of course I got crap all over it. It's getting messy. <laughs> That's why I wear these gloves. All right, so I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Shake it up. And then you just, wow, this one looks like it's, see if it works. Usually it's, it's a cream, it's not liquid. But we'll find out, won't we? All right, so I'm just gonna take it, mix it up a little bit. Typically the more red you add, the quicker it's gonna cure, the pinker it is, the quicker it cures. So 
keep that in mind. So grab some and basically put it on. And you can get stuff in here. I may do that actually to fill it in. I'm not sure, I'm gonna avoid it if I can. But you wanna kinda of get it in there and, and kind of squeegee it off. It's okay if you get more, more is better than less. It's gonna be tricky with that there, but you know, like you don't want it to have that because you'll have to reapply it again, like, you know, like a little ridge. So you'll wanna get it pretty smooth. I'm gonna do some there over that wood. Looks like it was scratched. Again, more is better. Then we're gonna skim it. And then it's easier just to sand it all off, in my opinion. So I'm not really worried about that. I'm just skim coating it here. There's mosquitoes out now, of course. I just got super busy during the day, so I have to do it at this time here. It's hard, balancing a job and a channel. And kids. <laughs> so I'm just gonna lightly go over it like that, just to make it, I want it to be a little higher than normal. And then there's other stuff here, you can kind of just press a little harder, get it off. Like I said, you just want to get it in. A lot of times you got to do it a couple times for it to come out the way you want it. But I'm trying to really balance it a little better. There we go. So I hate doing things twice. Now it's starting to get hard. I can feel it. It's within minutes, so you got to be careful. All right, so let me mix up another batch um, and then we'll get some more on the side. We'll do a time lapse of it um, and then I can uh, go ahead and sand it all off. Okay guys, so we're back and looks like I finished up. It just came out really, really sharp. You can see here where I got the Bondo in, nice and smooth. The back here, I actually filled in on the back here um, and it came out really good. You can see the edges, especially here where they were cut off. So more is better. Um, there are a couple issues here where it kind of flaked off. You can see right there it's lifting up. So most likely, I'm going to, you can see right here, take that off and fill it in with Bondo. So I actually ran out of time. I ran out of daylight is what happened. So down here, I just got to sand a little more, but you get the idea. Came out really smooth. Like it's really smooth. It doesn't look fine. Like right here, this, this whole crack got filled in right there, that whole thing. So it came out really good. It's very smooth. And again, I'm not painting it, I'm putting laminate over it. So I just wanna get it done before the winter comes and then probably in the spring I'll end up doing it. But um, probably tomorrow I'm gonna fill this in with Bondo. And then uh, the front I gotta redo as well. And I'll show you that real quick. Let me just quickly just lift it up. So this is it. Came out really smooth as well. I actually put more on the bottom here. That has to cure. I wanna make sure it's good to go. And then this is like really smooth. You can't even feel it. It looks like it's a different color and everything, but it's really smooth. This too, very, very smooth because I did it with 220 grit afterwards. 
And then over here, um, I wasn't really satisfied on how the dowels came out. They came out smooth, but just a tiny bit, not as good as I wanted to. So um, I'm gonna sand this out probably tomorrow as well. Same thing over here. But once it's done, you're not gonna be able to see anything. And then I can kind of leave the door off and then eventually put laminate on here where you measure the sides from here to here, cut it, place it on here, and then just get the router and go the opposite way because normally you want to go in a certain direction based on the bit, the way it cuts. And then in here you go the opposite because you're riding on the side of it differently. So uh, you got to pay attention to that. I'll show you guys how to do that. And then, uh, yeah, so we're pretty good this side. Still needs some put over here a little bit. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty smooth. You know, just down here, you can see where there's like little pieces missing right there, uh, which got rectified on the other side. We had the same issue going on over here. And, you know, you can see like right there, it got filled in and it feels really, really, really smooth except for that part there. So, so yeah, slowly but surely we'll get it done. Like I said, you know, I wanted to just make sure that um, at least the bondo portion got done. And then what I may do is spray paint um, with satin black, just hit the edges all around here, you know, around here as well. Just anything that can show past the laminate, all this right here is probably gonna be sprayed, but the center is not, um, it's not gonna bother doing that. I'm just gonna go there, put it in all on the edges, and then it'll be ready for laminate. So change the leg levelers out and it'll be ready to be painted black and to put the black laminate on the side to make it a gapless. So I'm really excited about it. You know, so can't wait. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's continue tomorrow. All right, guys, so here it is. Uh, this is the front here that I was doing earlier. It actually sat here all winter because, uh, so that should really be on there. <laughs> Just fine, I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna sand it down a little bit now. Uh, but it's all fine, that's the thing that I had glued. Um, the reason it sat here is because the weather just would not cooperate. So now I finally got it back out. This had remained bonded. I still got to do that. That was from the winter. And then I did this today. So I quickly went over it like you guys saw. Now you can see here that this is a little lighter than that. I put a little too much red on that, which is the hardener. So it takes a little longer to cure. It's kind of a pain. Uh, you really want it lighter. You want to go lighter than darker. So uh, anyway, so I always put excess on it because I want it to go over that. I don't worry about putting plexi or anything down to make it straight. I just basically take my sander, put it on the edge. I really want the edges to be smooth. I don't really care about the top too much because uh, it's going to have laminate on it. Because this thing is so just, if I paint it, it's going to be hard to hide these lines here. So I did it all along the edge here. I was pretty generous. All along here. I did a little bit up here. Didn't really need it, but I did a couple things just to hold these little cracks together. Uh, this is going to stay in there. It's going to be embedded inside. <laughs> I might sand it off just to make it nice, uh, you know, so that it sticks properly. Um, but I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to leave it on. Um, you can't really take it off. I thought about it, but it doesn't come off. So there it is. So let me go ahead, set up the tripod, and I'll go ahead and sand this down. When it's all done, I just like to take a tack cloth. I like to wear gloves because it gets all sticky and I don't like how that feels. <laughs> so you just kind of just get rid of everything you can. I'm just going to go ahead and spray paint the edges here because that's what I'm not going to laminate. Just to get it all done, I might spray this too so that the T-molding doesn't poke through. Um, I really should route this first. 
But you know, whatever, I'm gonna put a first coat on it, at least to get it done. And I'll do with that other stuff later. Lightly do this. You know, I already did it with the brush, so it's fine. I already did the other side. This is just the two sides that I wasn't, that I hadn't done yet. And I might get a little bit over here where I sanded. Beautiful. All right, let's see if we can get a little bit of spray painting done now. I mainly want, just want to do these here. Might as well, while I'm here. I really don't have enough paint is what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna take this one off because you can see here it's a little wobbly. This one already fell out, so it wasn't holding anything. So yeah, that thing was kind of hanging on there. And you can see some of the wood is a little damaged here. So what I'm gonna do is bond the wall this and then put this back on and then screw three holes into there and then uh, use a washer, like a really big washer about that big on the other side with a nut to kind of secure them in place so it won't come out again. All right, so I mixed up some more Bondo here and I'm just gonna kind of be pretty generous here and just glob some in there. I don't care if I'm covering the holes because I do want the holes covered. I'm gonna use that as a template anyway to redrill the holes, so not a big deal, but I definitely want to fill that in. Put some more in there. Mix it up a little better. There we go. There we go. Much better. And you know, if it doesn't fill the whole thing, it's not a big deal. Um, I'm gonna have the plate over it anyway. So I just don't wanna get it too much on the wheel here. Like right, there's like that screw sticking out. Gonna make sure that it's good to go. A little bit more there. And I'll just sand it off. Okay, I'm gonna put some penetrant in here. It's pretty much rusted. I'll get this so it doesn't drip as much. And then, yeah, I'll do that here. I definitely don't want it dripping down to that. All right, normally you're supposed to wait like what, 10, 15 minutes? Yep, it's coming out. Nice. Yep, one's turning too. And then the last one. Yeah, this one's coming out good. Sometimes I'll have to spray it on the inside because it'll have rust on the other side <laughs> that's exposed. Uh, in my case, it was fine. But uh, if it is like that, you want to spray penetrant on the other side as well, I guess. Probably would work better. Now, the reason I did that is because I want to spray these. I'm not going to hit it with a wire brush. I'm just going to put Rust-Oleum right over it. And this is getting already hard. Cures pretty quickly. I'm gonna, um, it's a little soft, but I'm gonna knock what I did over off of this thing here. So I'm gonna have to do as much sanding later. There we go. Okay, well that still cures. I want to show you something over here. 
So I'm going to take my router and actually follow along in the channel here. Uh, you can see if you look really close here, see that? That's actually a staple. Uh, what they do is they put the T-molding in and then they staple it on this side before they stencil it. So a lot of times when you're ripping it off, um, if you yank hard enough, if, the, if it doesn't crumble, um, it ends up just taking out, like it probably had one here, it just took out that whole chunk right there. I really should have bonded in there. That way when I do the channel, it's nice and neat. Um, I might still do that so to have the bondo out and it's still curing. I might just stick some in there to fix some of the channels here. But for the most part, you'll see another one right there. There's another one right there. So even if you do it cleanly and the uh, T-molding crumbles on you when it comes out, uh, you still want to get those out. You could either use a Dremel with like a cutting blade where you just cut through those or you just use what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to take that and go right over it with the uh, router with the bit that's supposed to be because I need to do it here. This is where I repaired some. But I'm gonna be checking it all around to make sure it's nice and tight because if it's like this and you leave it like that, for example, it's not gonna grab well on the uh, T-molding. So let me go ahead and fix those areas and I'll be back. Okay, so I ended up uh, drilling a hole. Uh, this was a little wobbly on here, see, because of that. So I just flipped it upside down, drilled that pilot hole in there with a smaller bit. And then obviously this other one couldn't fit in there. So I did the pilot hole, took it out, wind it up. That ended up fitting in there just fine. And now it fits nice and snug here. Perfect, so I'm gonna drill some pilot holes here and I'm gonna use these stronger um, screws, wood screws right here. So, and then uh, this one here, I don't wanna use a third one here because it could tear out the bondo because it's very weak or not really weak, but weaker than the normal wood. So I'm gonna put this through all the way, put the washers against the wood on the inside to kind of dissipate everything where the wood is, it's kind of thinner and weaker there and then put the nut and it should be fine. This is gonna go all the way through. The rest are just gonna anchor in, should be fine. Yeah. Let's see if this fits now. Yep, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna anchor that on the other side, put these over it, and then put the washer on and we should be good. So it's getting a little dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this up and then uh, show you guys afterwards. And then uh, we'll put this away for today. It, tomorrow's another day and we'll go ahead and uh, you know spray everything just to prime it a little bit to get everything done. The laminate came today. I'm so excited to put it on, so I can't wait.
Okay, so I wanted to give you an overview. I'm actually letting it cure here. Uh, it's getting a tiny bit chilly out, but it uh, should be fine for it to cure. Um, and I'll get it inside, it'll cure fully for a few days. But this is the repair that I had done to trying to figure out which one it is. Is it that one? I mean, I did, I think I did such a good job, I don't remember. Oh, this is it right here. So this is where I had the Bondo underneath. It's all done. Um, I put this uh, wood screw in that's really strong, this one that's really strong as well. And then this here is actually going to the other side, but a washer on the other side. Um, it came out really good. Um, I'm not actually putting these in. I could put more wood screws in there later, but I don't think I even need to, because uh, these are super strong, but I might, you know, um, the pilot holes are there already as well. So I might just do that later. Um, I painted the bottom flat black. I did a few coats. It was really hard because the MDF would just soak it up. Uh, but it came out pretty good. I'm kind of happy with it. Um, I didn't worry about the wheels because in the original one, the wheels had overspray from the cabinet and I thought it was kind of cool. So I said, well, you know, I'm going to give it overspray too with black. So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> the rest of the cabinet is pretty good. I didn't really worry about, you know, like little blemishes like this and stuff um, because I'm going to put the laminate right over it. I'm not sure if I'm going to go all the way and then staple the other thing to here. Or if I should just, uh, you know, put the laminate up to there and then put the um, kick plate on there. I'm not really sure. I still have to decide. Depends on how much material I have. Um, I had to send the laminate back, unfortunately, so I can't do it in this episode. But, um, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, it was damaged, so I had to send it back. Uh, but everything else came out pretty good. It's still drying a little bit. That's still drying down there. That I'm not really worried about because it's going to have a graphic on there that's custom for Gapless from Pacific Arcades. So that's going to be on the back. It's kind of like this pyramid thing. It looks really cool. Uh, that came out awesome. So I really worried about that. That's satin black. That's satin black. Originally, I did flat black on the inside. It didn't look as good because on the outside, right over here, I had satin black. And then this piece right here goes all the way up into here. And I figured it might as well be satin black. Um, it looks pretty good. It's not like shiny or anything. Satin is like kind of like a mix between flat and uh, shiny gloss and then all along here I did it as well so you know I was really careful in getting all these done right here just so it's you know looking great and then I also you could see here this is where I had bondo it's a great example I bondled over this and then I just took my slot cutter went right through and it cut a new slot and took out all the staples same thing here this is all bondoed you could see I put the slot cutter just to match my router and then the back came out really nice on the top I should say can't really see the back right now but you know I have it all drying here and then I just sprayed all along the edges that way when I put the laminate if there's any like chips or anything that happen you have this underneath you won't have to worry about it so leg levelers are on the way as well I got the nylon ones which are coming and it's turning out to be really good now I just gotta restore the coin door at one point um, so I'll do that in another episode. I'll just dedicate a whole episode to that because it's pretty involved. It's actually not bad. It's just time consuming. So I can't do it all in one shot here. But uh, let me show you the stuff that I painted. So this is a, actually this is the reverse side. It actually goes the other way. These are kind of almost dry here, but that's how it goes. It actually goes like that on the wood. And then the things attached to it, the, uh, I guess the, the hooks or the levers so that you can put the control panel down and put it on. But I tilted it this way so it can cure really good for this side. That's also the back side, which is going to be against, you know, the wood and it's going to go like that. So um, these are the ones, th these were heavily rusted around here and on this side. So you saw how I took everything off and then I just gave it a quick coat of Rust-Oleum because it's really important to use Rust-Oleum to prevent rust in the future, but I took the majority of it off. It should last for years. Here's a speaker grill, should be dry by now, came out really good. I also did the, um, the four bolts which go on there, which I will show you right here. These are the four bolts that I painted black. All I did was stick them in the cardboard there, make holes and then just sprayed them. I did a few coats on that, maybe four coats total in case like I nick them or anything like that while I'm putting them in. And then these I only gave a quick one coat to because these are the security screws and you don't want to get the gunk kind of like inside there. You don't want to um, not be able to 
you know, screw it down and stuff. I do have extras of these somewhere, which are brand new that were black. If I find them, I'm probably going to use those. But in the meantime, these are my backups. I figured I'd spray them really quick while I'm here. But again, I just did a quick coat um, with, you know, with the Rust-Oleum satin. Same thing here. These I gave four because these don't have a little divots in them. And of course, these are the rails and stuff. <clears throat> For this one here is the rail on the back that prevents the uh, bezel from going down. I am getting a glass bezel and glass marquee because this is going to be premium. You know, I'm going all out on this gapless build. Whereas my Ms. Pack I did before has the Plexi. Um, still looks great, but I wanted the glass for the gapless because it's a really special cab. And uh, this here are the brackets for the marquee. I did both sides. You can see there's no more rust on the other side. I took majority of it out and then sprayed it with Rust-Oleum, a couple coats here, and maybe three coats on top for the other one. So there it is. And they look great. So I'm gonna let these actually cure for, I don't know, a few more days, maybe a week or so. Um, there's no rush because the artwork is not coming for a while, so they can cure and get really uh, well. I'll just put them on the side somewhere. All right, people, that about does it for this episode. It's coming out really good. Can't wait for everything to get here with the artwork and the laminate. You know, like I said, the laminate got a little screwed up where it was a little bit damaged when I got it. So I'm talking to the guys now about it. Um, they have pretty good customer service, so we'll see what happens. Um, you know, but this is coming together. Can't wait to get it all inside. You know, start putting the guts in. Once I put the laminate on, we can actually bring it down to the basement and put all the guts inside and get it going. I have a lot of things in store with this. We're gonna put a multi-switcher from Riddle TV in this one. So it's gonna have Galaga, Gaplus, Galaga 88, you name it, it's gonna be in here. So I have a lot of plans for this thing. Uh, that thing can take up to eight different PCBs on it. So we're gonna see what we can do here. Keep it classic and keep it beautiful. It's gonna be my uh, number one cab at this point. I'm going all out on this. So. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. It's really important that you hit the like button, spread it around. You can only hit the like button if you have an account on YouTube. So what are you waiting for? Everyone's on it and <laughs> let's do it. Um, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're watching this, it really is a good channel. I have a lot more content. It's a whole restoration series on Ms. Pac-Man based on this cabinet actually. Uh, this one was kind of the wrecked cabinet versus the other one, which is pretty, not cherry, but it's close to mint um, with the original artwork. So. Click on the link above if you want to see that. But uh, I'm also on Twitter. You guys can see me. I'm putting uh, progress pics as we go before I release the videos. So don't forget to follow me there at Dell's Arcade and also on Instagram as well at Dell's Arcade. Last but not least, I still have my t-shirt campaign. So if you want to support the channel, everything goes back into it, buying equipment, stuff like that. And uh, you know, it's all for you guys. The production quality on this channel is pretty good. I try to keep it very good and I plan to improve it hopefully in the future with some 4K footage. So you guys are supporting you know, me and the community by uh, buying some t-shirts for the cause. All right guys, so that about does it. I will talk to you next time. Take care.